If you like the video, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Today on Pull My Focus, I'll show you a quick and easy way to hide someone's identity in a video. Wow, getting you out of the house is always such a big deal. No, 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 I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm just checking the weather. All right, let's go to the new Boba place. Why are you wearing that coat? The weather says it's gonna be crazy hot today. All right. Whoa, what the hell, dude? It's not gonna be that hot. What? Wait a minute. Hmm. Never mind. Mosaic track. When you absolutely need to avoid anyone getting butt hurt visually. My friends, welcome to Pull My Focus Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking, where we bring you inside tips on making great video. And let's get right to it. Now, I want to show you the quick and easy way to mask someone's identity in a video, whether they're still or moving. Now, we're using Premiere Pro for this. So I don't know how it translates to your other editors, but maybe. Maybe you can use some of this stuff. Okay, we have a scene from a thing we did a little while ago. That's Thea right there, and then Courtney will show up in the scene. But let's start with Thea, okay? I want to mask Thea's identity. So, an easy way for me to do this, so that you can just get started and go, and you don't have to watch the whole video, but we will get into a couple of more things. So, please stick around. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my effects and I'm gonna grab mosaic. And if I just come up to an effect and go M-O-S-A-I-C, I see a bunch of different mosaics, but the one I want is in stylize. Grab stylize and drop it onto your clip. Boom, the entire scene is now mosaic. It's not what we want, but we're not there yet. What we wanna do is create a mask, or uh, we're gonna create a lips mask. So we're going to go to our effect controls and under effects, we're going to see the effect we just added, which is mosaic. And we have these little tools here. One is an ellipse mask. One is a four point polygon mask. And one is just a free draw bezier. bezier. Uh, I'm going to use an ellipse mask because it's nice and round. There you go. And now I'm going to move that mask. So notice now that entire screen of mosaic is just limited to the mask we created and inside that ellipse. Okay, I'm gonna move that mask over my talent and I'm going to shape it by grabbing these little handles here and here and just limit it to her face. How about there and how about there? Make it nice and big. Now, the, the, the points in here are a little, a little large. And they're actually called horizontal and vertical blocks. So under horizontal and vertical blocks in our effects, we can change them. They default to 10. Let's change this. I like to start around, I don't know, 30 by 30. That seems to be cool. Uh, what if we do 40 by 30? Yeah, that's more square. Okay, great. And notice these extra handles on masks. This handle here uh, applies to feathering the mask so that the sh we, we lose the sharp edge. We don't have a sharp edge. The more I stretch it out, the more it feathers, but obviously the more I reveal, you know, what's under it. So I'm going to just feather it out a little bit. And this second one is uh, expansion, mask expansion. So it'll expand the mask further than what you already defined. And you can use these to tweak the look a little. Okay, so I have a little feathering and a little expansion. Great. Uh, and now she's obscured. Great, bye. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. What happens here, though, the mask is stationary. So if she moves, notice, if the footage moves or she moves, we're back to seeing who that is underneath the mask. What you used to have to do is you'd have to keyframe every movement of the mask. So you'd, she'd move around. You'd, the, when this happened, you'd have to keyframe, drop a keyframe on mask, pa max, mask path, move it, too tedious. There's some After Effects love in Premiere now that allow you to track a uh, track a point 
Okay, so let's do that. That uses these little options here. Track selected mask, back one frame, backwards, forwards, and forwards one frame. So let's do this. Let's find a good place to start. Let's start here, because we start to get movement already. Okay, let's start here, put the mask where we want, and then click the track selected mask forward button. That will start to analyze the scene and track Thea throughout the entire scene. Notice how it's moving and going and tracking her. I'll fast forward this so that you guys don't have to wait. All right, so if we take a look, it actually tracked our actor all the way through the scene. I'm fine, thank you. Great. So that's the basics of doing this kind of tracking in Premiere Pro. Now, if I wanted to, I can track the other way also. So our mask, notice how when you do the, when you use the auto track, it puts a new point. If we zoom into here, it's going to put a new point in every frame of the video because that's how it keeps track of the mask. So it does the keyframing for you. So that means if I zoom out a little bit, and if I go to the very first point of this, which is right here, I can track backwards from this point. And it will go and it'll actually create keyframes back in time. Okay. So that, in a nutshell, is how you track someone with a mosaic mask. Now here's some advanced tips on using this. If you have a single actor, it's easy. You just apply the effect to the clip and then do the rest of the things that I mentioned. If you have multiple actors, that gets a little hairy. What I usually will do is I won't apply the effect to the clip. And I'll show you why. So let's clear this clip off. I'm going to right click and go to remove attributes. All right. And under remove attributes, I can tell it to remove everything so that we reset our clip back to stage one. It's fresh and clean. You know it's fresh and clean. So fresh and so clean, clean. You know that when the little effects gray box is gray. If that box turns a different color, then you know you have some effects on your clip. All right. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use adjustment layers. So for each actor in the scene, even if I only had one actor, I would probably use an adjustment layer. So let's grab an adjustment layer. I already had an adjustment layer in my template because I just have one built. Otherwise, you can click the new item icon and then say, give me a new adjustment layer. All right. Now, I'm going to do the exact same procedure all over again, except this time I'm going to add mosaic to the adjustment layer. Everything else is the same. I'm going to create under mosaic and ellipse mask, put it over my talent, size it up, feather it out, expand it maybe, increase my horizontal and my vertical blocks. And then when I hit track, it's going to track the way it's supposed to, but all that tracking information, this whole mask is going to be applied to the adjustment layer. That way I can do a bunch of things. I can add multiple actors by adding multiple adjustment layers and tracking them on their own separate adjustment layers. I can also turn it off if I want just by turning off the layer. And I can name each, each clip Thea's mosaic mask, Courtney's mosaic mask. All right. So I'll show you this. We have some tracking with Thea. Once again, I can simply add another adjustment layer for Courtney. Let's add hers here. Let's add hers here. So I can spare you some of the details. Go to effects. And you might have noticed that it's just an effect. I can actually do something different. I can just use a blur. So if, let's search for blur. So Thea is going to have a mosaic. And let's use a Gaussian blur for Courtney. Boom, Gaussian blur. 
Now, the blur doesn't come in at 100, so we're going to, once we set the blur on our adjustment layer, which is Courtney's adjustment layer, the Gaussian blur comes in at zero, so you didn't see anything happen. So I'm going to click and go 100. Now it's 100% blurred, and I do the exact same thing, guys. This time I'm going to use a square just to be different, and I'll drag the square, and I'll just, I'll make it whatever. Big square over the face, and since she's on a separate layer, when I track mask her, it follows Courtney. We still have Thea's mask. They're completely different masks. And, well, life is good. So once again, very simple. Um, I would suggest making an adjustment layer first, then doing your tracking on that adjustment layer. Because if you have actors that cross or actors that do different things, you can do different effects and you can hide their identity in different ways. Now, one last bonus, because this wouldn't be pull my focus if I didn't give you a bonus. bonus. The way we used to see in Hollywood, these obscured identities were with what is called a Charlie bar. Check, take a look. So here's Audrey and, uh, you know, she was wearing clothes, so sorry. <laughs> here's Audrey and this is what's called a Charlie bar over her eyes. So how do we make that work? The sa exactly the same procedure, except there's one little trick we're going to do. So as you notice, this Charlie bar is tracking her and staying over her eyes. Okay. So let's reset. So I'm going to right click, remo remove attribute. Oops, nope, not clear. <laughs> I'm going to leave that in too. Remove attributes, hit OK. And so that Charlie bar is gone. So first things first, I'm going to use opacity this time. And opacity has the ability to create masks. So I'm going to create a four point. I'm going to create a free a free mask here right now. Okay. And now we're going to go doot, 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 doot. I don't care if it's sloppy. Boom. We have a mask over her eyes. Step one. Step two, I'm going to hit invert so that the only thing that's showing through is the frame below it, which is nothing. It's black. So there creates our Charlie bar. Step three, we're going to, you know, go to the beginning or go to the middle, wherever you want, set the mask where it's supposed to be, and then hit track forward. Now watch what happens when we track forward though. Well, wait a minute. Something's not right here. The typical behavior of a Charlie bar is not to tilt around with the talent. So this is actually kind of wrong. Let's zoom out and see how we can fix it. I'm going to undo that. So notice how the Charlie bar kind of dances in the wrong way. See it's rotating. It's not supposed to rotate. We're going to undo. We're going to reset. Go back to our first frame right there. And if you choose the little wrench tool next to the mask, it's the tracking method. Tracking method is always defined as position, scale, and rotation. It's all three. I only want position. I just want to, I want to stay the same size and stay in the same rotation. So we're going to choose position. And when we hit track forward, no more crazy rotation. It stays just like it is. All right. Let's take a look. Oh, one other thing. We're going to turn the feathering off because the mask always comes in with 10 feather. We want a sharp edge, so we're going to turn the feathering off and take a look. And that's it. A couple of ways to hide the identity of people in your videos, whether you use a mosaic, a blur, or a charlie bar. Old school. Thanks for watching. Check out PullMyFocus.tv for all our articles. And also, we have courses available. If you go to pullmyfocus.tv forward slash courses, you can see what's available there. Much longer form. We go into deep dives about different things. We have our first course available, which is on audio and getting really good at audio and Premiere Pro. Once again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Am I even with you? You never even.